Okay, we're on day eight and I'm pretty excited because today's Ethiopia and normally when I test a roaster I go with an Ethiopia because I've heard and I don't know if this is true or not because I'm not a roaster but I've heard that uh, you know kind of high elevation light lighter roast coffees you know stuff like that coffees with delicate flavors like floral and fruity and whatnot those are the hardest to roast because it's the most difficult to kind of narrow down those flavors and and get those out of the roast uh, when they're doing the roasting process. So, um, so I like to kind of test roasters with Ethiopia, and this one is a pretty high elevation, not the highest that we've we've had so far, but uh, it's sixteen hundred to nineteen hundred meters. It is one variety, one variety. So this is not a blend, which is good uh, because I want to you know, really taste the characteristics of one place. So it says heirloom though. Mm, okay. Anyway, heirloom. So, uh, this is from the Sidamo region. Uh, taste notes are cherry, floral, peach. And actually I smelled peach when I was brewing this. Now it's more floral. But anyway, let's see what it says about Ethiopia. I think this needs to cool for just another couple of seconds. Um, it says the uh, Oromia Coffee Farmers Cooperative Union. Wow, that's a long name. Uh, coffee producers are located in the Sanamo region in southwestern Ethiopia. <clears throat> it's one of the first producers to pilot the fair trade climate standard. 20,000 coffee farmers can improve their living standards or living conditions and income while building resilience to the effects of climate change. This coffee is grown alongside NSETs, NSETs or Ethiopian bananas. Oh, interesting. I never knew that. Uh, which help retain moisture in the soil and feeds the people. Okay. Well, there we go. Very interesting. Um, I want to say too, when I did this brewing process, I'll, t I'll tell you a little bit about my thought process going into this. Uh, when I was weighing out the beans, I noticed that even small beans were about 0.2 grams, which is pretty dense. Uh, light roast, there was a pretty noticeable variation in the, in the roast levels. Some were really light, some were moderately light. <clears throat> but anyway, so uh, light roast, very dense. Uh, I looked at the tasting notes and again, those delicate flavors, I want to protect that. So I want to keep the temperature down a little bit, at least for now. That's what I'm, you know, my thought process. I may be wrong, but I'm testing this out. Um, so temperature down, but since it's so dense, I wanted to do a fine grind so I could maximize extraction. So maximize extraction or anyway get get an appropriate extraction out of this um, protect the flavors by lowering the temperature a little bit and um, b60 you know to create the agitation that I you know to help you know help along with the extraction process um, that's about it yeah I followed uh, what what's it was it name? James Hoffman's b60 method and uh, for the recipe and yeah that's kind of how it goes so all right i think this is cool enough let's give it a try oh oh it smells good uh okay let's see mm. Give me, give me a few seconds here. Oddly enough, I'm not getting any, any strong characteristics. Let's see. This really surprises me. I, I, I really thought I would get more like clear, distinct flavors, like, uh, <clears throat> at least at this point, I'm not, 
but it is still fairly hot so that that could be part of the reason the heat will mask those delicate flavors more you know more so than maybe like your chocolatey or nutty flavors so <clears throat> so that could be part of it mm, but it, it tastes like the maybe it's just a hair on the sour side i probably could have gone a bit finer but i was i was pretty far on the fine end for my for my v60 and the brew ran a little bit long uh as i said the temperature was a little bit lower so that that would have you know maybe i should have raised the temperature maybe i i was overthinking protecting the flavors or whatever um yeah maybe maybe that's the case just a hair on the sour side though it was it's close okay i'm getting a little bit more of that peach let's see one second no no sherry yeah more more of the peach but actually it, it's not so much peach as it is apricot for me it, it's got an apricot flavor but apricot's a little bit more sour than peach so maybe that's my fault <laughs> Okay, so peach, I'm getting, I'm getting slight peach, slight apricot, right in that area. Uh, and for now, I'm going to, you know, let this cool a little bit longer. I'll set the video and if anything changes, once it cools, I'll put it in the, in the notes down below. So again, thank you very much and I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, and tomorrow I'm not going to look at the tasting notes because I don't want it to get in my head. And for me to like be thinking in a certain direction. So tomorrow I won't look ahead of time and I'm just going to blindly do a taste and, and see what, see if what I taste matches with what's on the card. So, all right, see you tomorrow.